God. I worship you because of who you are. You are our Father. You are our Savior. You are the deliverer. You are our Prince of Peace. That's who you are. Lord, we worship you because we can't do nothing without you. We need you, oh Lord. We need you and we need you now. We need you ever so now. We need you, Lord. We come here with a mindset to worship because of who you are. Because of who you are. We come here this morning to worship you. Who you are. Worship you because of who you are. God is good. I tell you, God is good. Give God a clap of praise this morning. God is good, I tell you. Give him a clap of praise. His mercy endures forever. His love endures forever. Just can't get enough of, of worshiping God. The one that sit high and look low and knows every man's heart. We can't get enough of it. Thank God. I'd like to thank God for this moment to be standing before you, brothers and sisters of Galilee. Pastor left me in his stead this morning and asked me what I preach, and I told him I'd be glad to. Anytime God give you an assignment, you got to go. And we're here to follow instructions, not give instructions. When we're when we serving the true and living God, we also got to be mindful that this God is asking us to do something. We ought to be glad. Yeah. If he done woke you up this morning and started you out and you done got here, you ought to be glad. Because yeah. yeah. this is the house of worship. Yeah. The place where we worship God together yeah. in unity and in the spirit and in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The spirit of truth. Yeah. God is good, I tell you this morning. I'd like to thank my pastor for giving me this grand opportunity to, to come and stand before you all this morning. And uh, thank you, Brother Burke, for reading and doing the work this morning for me. What we all try to do together. We try to work together, y'all. We love our pastor, and we want to do all we can for him when he's not here. And when he's here, we're going to do the right thing is follow his lead. But you know, uh, we had some great times and moments, y'all, this week. Last week, we, we seen some things that went on with the government. And you know, I thought about all them historical moments that God let us see, that we get a chance to witness yeah. and be a witness where we can pass it on to our children. We got a chance to see the first black president yeah. of the United States. Yes, then we turn around and get a, another black president, vice president, yeah. a woman yeah. in the United States. Yeah. You can't tell me God ain't good. Yeah. Amen. You can't tell me that God won't elevate you. Amen. In the midst of all that what went on that God will keep you in the midst of it when you got your faith grounded in him. Grounded in him. And here we are, I got Miss Katanja Brown Jackson. Here she is. She got a chance to triumph in front of the whole world, you all. And she said she done it by faith. <laughs> She done it by faith, y'all. Yeah. Believing, trusting, yeah. depending on God 
to elevate her. She triumphed in the middle of all that, that rocket that went on because they couldn't find nothing. Don't tell me God ain't good. She done it right here in America. So the women that come behind her know that you can achieve anything you want. All you got to do is have God by your side. And if God is with you, I tell you, ain't no turning back. She became the first black female justice on the Supreme Court in America. That tells you something. That God can change the heart of people. When you're worshiping and you're praising his name. What a remarkable history, time in history, y'all. For women. Women, you ought to give yourself a hand. Give yourself a hand, women. That's an achievement. When God got you, ain't nothing else can stop you from playing and triumphing in the victory that he has set before you. In your ability to go forward, God will give you the strength. He will give you the power. He will elevate you in your ability to stand in him in the midst of a world that's full of triumph and tyranny. We see it. We are eyewitness to it, y'all. We see what God would do for you. When you keep your faith in him, she took the humiliation. She kept her mouth closed. She did the same thing Jesus did. And she took it right in front of her family. Ain't that something, y'all? In front of her children. They're always talking about their children, but they forgot about the girl children was sitting next to. And her mother and father sitting out there in the office. I tell you, God will keep you. Yes, See, God work on the inside while they working on the outside. Yeah, yeah. See, he got the power to do that. And he kept her. She said, I didn't get this far by myself. I got it by faith, being in God, and I grounded it right there. What a God we serve, y'all. Yeah. God put her there for such a time as this. We all ain't blind. We all didn't see it for ourselves. Ain't God good? Won't he make you triumph in the middle of a storm? Won't he give you victory? And whatever you want to achieve, we talking about God. They forgot that it was a God in the midst of them. That's what they forgot. See, whenever you forget God, guess what? He gonna run right over you. And that's just what happened. She got her victory in Christ Jesus because it was, it was 53, y'all. It just wasn't 51, it was 53. It meant something, them three. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what it meant. We're right on past them. You can't stop God from elevating who he want to put there. You can't do it. I don't care what you got up there at the Capitol. The Capitol don't run nothing. God does. This is his world. Guess what, y'all? We living in it. We get a chance to see it for ourselves. You can't tell me God ain't good. You can't tell me he won't triumph. Help you to triumph in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your problems, in the midst of your situations. God will triumph for you. But I'm going to get to these scriptures, y'all, here in a minute. I just was happy to to see all the world and see these women. Look at all these young women out there in the audience. To see them, to see a woman to get elevated by God. It all wasn't physical, y'all. It was spiritual. Because, see, God works on the inside out. God will help you to triumph. Over any situation. But as we go to these scriptures today, we see that Jesus triumphed when he went into Jerusalem. We see that Jesus triumphed 
But I'm going to read these two verses. These are the ones I want you to look at this morning. This two and this three. Yeah. Saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say oh, unto you, you should say, the Lord has need of them. And straightway he shall send them. But I want to pin this this morning. Have Christ triumph in your life. Have Christ triumphed in your life. Since you've been born again, have he gave you victory over things? We all talk about our health and our strength. Have he given you victory? Because guess what? When you grounded in Christ, that's where you're headed, to victory. There are many Christians that have accepted Christ as their personal Savior and was born again. And Christ entered in. And once you entered in, Christ had triumphed right then. Because guess what? Once you're saved, you save forever. That's right. That's right. And once you're in Christ's hand, you can't be plucked out. That's right. We all got benefits, y'all, for yeah. being with Christ. Yeah. No matter what come upon you, what kind of, no matter what sickness, what situation, what happened in your life? Guess what? We got victory in Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can triumph over anything when we got Christ Jesus at the head of the table. Yeah, yeah. See, you got to make him a part of your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to accept him. And I like how Mon- brother, Sister Monique did one side. One side she said she talked about surrendering. I felt it. Yeah. She was talking about surrendering it all. Surrender to the most high God, to our Savior. It said there are ones who have let Christ triumph over their life. And now you're going to be, you're going to be saved forever. You went from being dead, now you're alive. Ain't God good? Because once the Holy Spirit did it in, you ain't going nowhere. And you got the rights and the benefits to triumph over anything that comes your way. I tell you, God will give you the vitality. He will give you the Holy Spirit when you're looking and waiting for him to come in. See, Christ is good, I tell you. Did he not help you in the time of this? Did he not bless you? Did he not keep you? Did he not cover you and made a way for you? Did he not do it? Did he not open the doors that you wanted open? Did he not close the doors that you need closed? We all done been there, y'all. Did he not give you the job that you asked for? Those houses, those cars, those clothes, those shoes. All that come through Christ. All of it did. From one thing to another. Christ. Did he not give you anything at all? You can't say he didn't give you nothing. Because you're here today. He gave you breath in your lungs. He gave you eyesight to see. He gave you legs to walk. He blessed you morning after morning. And every heartbeat you got, guess what? That's him. That's him beating for you. I tell you, God is good. He'll bless you. And he'll keep you. And he'll continue to make his face shine upon you. If you just let him in, let him triumph in your life. And here it is that Jesus is on his final descent, Mm y'all. He's headed toward the cross. This is Palm Sunday, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Palm Sunday? Yeah, yeah. 
Here it is, the Christ at the beginning of the week, yeah. getting ready, preparing himself to offer himself as a living sacrifice, yeah. holy and acceptable to God. Yeah. Guess who he did it for, y'all? Mm -hmm. yeah. He did it for every one of you. He done it for you, he done it for you, and he done it for me. Yes. Entered into Jerusalem. He had prepared himself to enter into Jerusalem, the holy city of God. This is the center point of uh, opposition to Jesus. The center point. Here he is entering in. Yeah. And they said this was his first appearance being in Jerusalem. His first time being in the city that God had in the horizon all that time. Y'all remember, he, he looks up toward Jerusalem and says, oh, how I want to hug you. Oh, how I want to cradle you. Y'all yeah. remember that? And now here it is, his first time. He's doing this stuff according to God's plan. And one thing I love about Christ, he loved keeping his father's will. Yeah. See, when, you do, when you're in the will of God, See, when, you, when, you, when you're acting in the will of God, it ain't long for God responds. It's not long. Yeah. That's all we have to do is ask what's in the will of God. God, if it be thy will, let thy will be done. On earth as well it is in heaven. Yeah. And God can do it today, y'all. He ain't got to wait later on because we serve a right now God. That's who we serve. That's how we triumph in this world. By serving God and trusting God, believing in God, yeah. having our faith grounded in God, and being obedient. I love what Sister Tia, when she says, when she speaks about obedience, she say blessings come right behind it. And I say, you know what she said with such authority? Because she's right. Yeah. And anytime you're obeying God, trusting God, and, and looking for God, and keeping your eye on God, and reading about God, spending time with God. Guess what, y'all? Blessings come. And guess what? They don't quit coming. He said he will pull you out of blessing that you, you can't receive it. I didn't say it. He did. He made the promise. But if you're obedient, guess what? you part of the promise. Ain't that all right? That's all right when you're part of the promise. You get to triumph in the glory of God, in his victoriousness, in his achievement to, to overwhelm you with his blessings. It said twice he told his disciples that Jerusalem would be the place where he would die, that he would suffer and die, and also the place where he would be raised from the dead again in three days. That's what Christ said. It said he told his disciples not one time, but two times. He said, I'm going to a place. They're going to press me. But I got to go for the fulfillment of my, my, my father's will. Yeah. It's not my will, but it's his will. It's his will. Let thy will be done. You know, he didn't go on the human side of it, y'all. When the human side kicked in, remember that up there in the Garden of Gethsemane? When he looked in there and said, Lord, what? Yeah. yeah. He went to his father. He said, Father, could you let this cup pass? Could there be another way? Y'all remember that? Yeah. Yeah. He ain't go one time. He went two times. And then he went back third, third time. He said, Father, not my will, but let thine will be done. Yeah. He got on and went on up and went on back to the disciples. Yeah. Then he triumphed, it says, into Jerusalem. So for the whole world to see, yeah. he said, in three days, I'm going to pick my life back up. He done that. The whole world in Jerusalem shook with fear when he was born. They had been chasing Jesus at the day he was born. Trying to catch up with him, trying to do this, trying to stop him. But when you got the spirit of God with you, you can't be stopped. You can't be stopped, y'all. 
Because Christ is going to triumph. Every time. Not sometimes. But here at this time, they're going to be shaken with dreads and hope at his death for him fulfilling his father's will. It's his father's will that got to be done. But here it is that Christ sent two of his disciples once he entered into the siege. He sent two of his disciples. He said, go into the village over against you and straightway ye shall find an ass tied with a coat with her. He said, don't make no detours. Christ then gave him some instructions. And he said, don't make a detour. Go straight over there. And this is what you're going to see when you get there. Have Christ ever gave you some instructions? You know, because every time we detail off, something happens. You know, we get the, Christ give us something to do, and then we make the job by taking a shortcut. Ain't no shortcut to heaven. There's only one way you're going to get to heaven, that's through Christ Jesus. Amen. Ain't no shortcut. You're going to have to come through Christ. You're going to have to see Christ. And if Christ gave you some instructions, you should follow them to the letter. His disciples had to follow the instructions. Because if they had a detour off, they'd have got tied up, tangled up. Have you ever been tied up and tangled up? Have you ever had a, a little job to do? You say, no, I'm going to take the shortcut and do it this way. And then it get bigger than what it's supposed to be. How many times we done did that? Ain't no shortcuts in take, uh, uh, making no cake. If you ain't put no eggs in there, I don't know what's going to happen. If you don't put no sugar in there, they sure ain't going to eat it. But there ain't no shortcuts. And Christ told them to bring them to me. Bring them to me. That's all we got to do. Whatever problem we got, we need to take it to Christ in prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever situation we get in, take it to Christ in prayer. Yeah. Many times we want to do it our way. All we, and all we got to do is see Christ. But they did as he said. He said, if any man say unto you, they should say, the Lord has need of them. Yeah. And straightway he will send them. If anybody try to stop you, if anybody want to have a word with you, he said, don't worry about that. Just tell them that the Lord, the master, have need of it. Tell them that, tell them that the master has need. That God has need for them. Because in this text, when it says that Jesus entered in, the people was looking for somebody to ride on a big white horse yeah. as a king. Yeah. They was looking for a big old roaring army to be behind them yeah. with men and with, with swords and shields and all that stuff. And, and, and Christ came in. How did he come? He came in on a donkey. Yeah. Yeah. He came in on his foal, on the baby donkey. He did that. So that what was spoken of Isaiah would be fulfilled. And Isaiah said, Oh, rejoice, O ye daughters of Zion. Shout, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, the king cometh unto thee. He is just and have salvation and lo, and ride on an ass and upon a coat, the foal of an ass. Zechariah prophesied that. And God, and, and Christ is filling them for the prophecy of what the prophet had already spoken of. Yeah. I tell you, God keeps his commands. Yeah. He don't detour off from what his father has before him. Yeah. So we shouldn't detour off either. Yeah. If he tells you to cast all your cares upon him, then do just that. If he tell you to hand it off to him, then hand it off. Yeah. We got to be able to loose all that that got us bound. Yeah. Loose all that that's got us tangled up. 
loose all that that's holding us back. We got to let it go. And listen to what Christ is saying to us. He want to help you. He want to show his love to you. He wants you to trust him and believe in him and have faith in him. This is what God wants for each and every one of us. If you're looking to accomplish anything in life, see God about it. And put your faith in it. And believe what you're asking for. And you will see God triumph. In the midst when you couldn't see it, he seen it. But what he's seen, he's seen your faith. Blind by the bed said, Lord, you can help me see again. He said, thy faith have made you whole. The lady that touched him with his garment, he said, who touched me? She got up and said, it's I. He said, listen, little sister, your faith have made you whole. And see, that's all Christ wants for us is to make us whole again. When you surrender to him. When you give him your life, when you let him take over your life and you do things by the way he has it already set out for you. Because he ordered your steps every day anyhow. He ordered your steps. Every day. He don't order some of them. Every day you get up, your step is ordered. Christ ordered your steps. He said, tell ye the daughters of Zion to behold the king is coming. Christ had came to sacrifice himself, not for one, but for all. When he came riding in on that donkey, they was looking for a man with a big old white suit on, with a big old helmet on, with a sword on the side. But Christ came in peace. He came with righteousness with him. He came with salvation with him. He came with justification. Because he had his dedication locked up into his father and doing his father's will. See, when you get locked up with Christ, you can't help but to go forward. And see, when God started elevating you, can't nobody stop you. They're going to do either one of the things. They're going to get ran over or either they're going to get out the way. (laughs) Now, which one you want? But we got to serve God. We got to keep putting our trust in him. Keep being obedient to him. Keep laboring in the work that he has for us around here. We owe each other. We owe God a worship. And we owe him a praise. But we owe him to be true to him too. We owe him that. If he being true and honest with us, we need to be the same way with him. We all got faults, y'all. As long as we live, we're going to fall short of the glory of God. But guess what? Christ is our advocate, Brother Lacey. We can go to him in prayer, Brother Barlow, and tell God we're sorry for what we did. And turn. Not turn around. Don't get me wrong. And turn. That means take a new direction in it. Go another way. And let Christ lead the way. See, we have to keep doing that. But we see that the, they brought in the ass and they brought in the coat and they put the clothes on him so Christ can sit on it. Yeah. I know that coat probably looked back and said, that's the master. That's the creator of the world. I got to let Christ ride. And see, that's what we got to do, y'all. We got to let Christ ride. Don't go nowhere without putting Christ in the car with you. Let him ride. Let him steer the way. Let him uh, uh, lead the way in your life. It said the multitude went ahead of Christ. And when he entered into Jerusalem, they said they they started laying down their coats, laying down palms, laying down straw, so he didn't have to walk on the bare ground. It lets you know that the king is here. The king of who? The king of glory. He's here. It said they went to crying out, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. 
Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. He says, Lord, save us, please. When Christ came, he came with a salvation plan, y'all, in his hand. He came with salvation to save every one of them. Christ is on his final descent of his ministry, of his life, of everything that he had to accomplish in them 33 years that he was on this earth. He was headed toward the cross to pay our sin debt, something we couldn't pay. That's where he was headed. And they was hollering, Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! And the people got to saying, who is this? Who is this that's coming in here? And they said, the multitude said, that this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. Yeah. Not only is he the king, he a prophet too. And not only that, he a prophet, but he a priest too. But not only is he a priest, he's a savior yeah. of this world. Yeah. Father, if you make me a body, I'll go down. Yeah. If need be, die. Yeah. He was set up. He was set up, y'all. Yeah. He was set up by God yeah. to come down here to die not for one sin, but all our sins. Yeah. Not one sin, but every one that we commit. Yeah. We all sin and fall short, as I said earlier, yeah. of the glory of God. Yeah. But let me tell you, let me show it to you over here in Isaiah 53. It says, surely he has bore our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet did he esteem stricken, smitten of God, yeah. and afflicted. Did, did y'all just hear what I just said? Yeah. I said he was, uh, he was smitten of God and afflicted. So God had it already set up for his son. Yeah. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was chastised for our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we were healed. All we like sheep has gone astray, and we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of us all. That word all mean every one of us. And he was oppressed, and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears is dumb. And so he opened not his mouth. He took it, y'all. He took it for you. He took it for me. He took it for all of us. He took that. He was taken from prison, from judgment. And when he was declared his generation... He was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgressions of the people was he stricken. Yeah. All of laid on his shoulders, y'all. You ought to be glad this morning. Yeah. You didn't have to pay a debt. Yeah. God, Christ paid it for you. Yeah. He paid your sin debt, yeah. a debt you couldn't pay. And it started out on that Monday. They was hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, save us. And at the end of the week, they hollering, crucify him. Yeah. Crucify him. Yeah. Chose Barabbas over Christ. Yeah. Just because he didn't go by the dignitary's way. Yeah. We seen that ourselves. Yeah. With Miss Brown, the Supreme Court Justice. They didn't go by their way, so they wanted to ridicule him. Mm-hmm. She didn't open her mouth. And that's the same thing Christ did. He didn't open his mouth. He took it. He took all them beatings, marching from courtroom to courtroom. Then they nailed him to the cross, nailed his hands, nailed his feet, stabbed him in the side, put a crown of thorns on his head. He did it for you. That we might have life and have it more abundantly. Then he died and gave up the ghosts. Stayed dead all day Friday, all day Saturday. Yeah. But early Sunday morning, he got up. Yeah. He got up with all power. Yeah. And heaven and earth in his hand. Yeah. 
He didn't conquer hell, death, and the grave. Yeah. And he done it for us, y'all. Yeah. He didn't say a mumbling word. Yeah. But he took it. So every now and then, when you feel like you're being oppressed, go ahead and take it. Yeah. But I guess I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. Stay prayed up too. Yeah. Yeah. And watch God triumph yeah. in your dilemma, yeah. in your situation, yeah. in your cases that going to come before you daily. Because, see, we get, we get up every day, right? Yeah. So every day is a different challenge. Yeah. 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 And we can't duck it. Yeah. But we got something to go against it. Yeah. We got Christ. That's right. The everlasting peace. Yeah. Prince of peace. Yeah. The one who took it all. He took it all for you. And he took it all for me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for Palm Sunday. Yeah. There's a word from the Lord. Thank you all for letting me come up here. Amen. Hosanna in the highest. Yeah. We owe him a worship. Yeah. And yes, we owe him a praise. Yeah. Shall we stand? Amen. The doors of the church is open. Amen. While the soil of your heart is right, please come. Please come while the soil of your heart is right. Yeah. If you want to triumph in this life, Choose Christ. Yeah. He will give you the victory. He will help you accomplish whatever achievements you need in this life. Yeah. He will give you glorious victories over your challenges. Because yeah. every day you're going to get a different challenge. Yeah. But we got one God that takes it all on. Yeah. And he tells us to cast our cares upon him. And then when you do it, go on over there and take a seat. Yeah. Let him do the work. Yeah. Even in your sleep, he's working yeah. in your behalf. Would you come? Would you let a God that never sleeps in slumber enter into your life yeah. and give you victory over this world? He took on all the pain, bruises, Shame, iniquities that was cast upon him. And he done it for you. He done it for you because he loved you. Would you come and let him triumph in your life? Will that be one? People out there in TV land, would you come? If you have given yourself to Christ, that's all you need. You have just gained a great victory in the kingdom of God as part of one of his servants, his humble servant. Whenever you submit yourself and humble yourself before a true and living God, he has the way of embracing you forever. That's the God we serve. Will there be one? Now we'll have altar prayer. Dear and gracious and eternal Father, yeah. here we are, Lord, again with our minds pressed toward heaven, yeah. thanking you for triumphing in all of our lives, yeah. thanking you for blessing us and covering us giving us things in the time of thee, being there for us. You told us to ground our faith in you, Lord, and we believe what you say. And I just want to come this morning to say thank you for being a true and living God that, that be there for us, not one time, but all the time. Hearing our cries, hearing our prayers, hearing our moans, and hearing our groans. You know what we need, Lord. We need you. We ask and pray over our pastor while he's out with his son yeah, yeah. doing what a father was supposed to do. Yeah. Bless him and keep him and make your face to shine upon him yeah. and bless his wife and bless his mother. Yeah. And not only that, Lord, we just ask you to bless Galilee. Yeah. Bless us as a whole, but also bless us individually. 
We all in need of some kind of prayer because we all got all kind of aches and pains, Lord. But we know you're a sustainer of life and you can keep us through anything. There's nothing. You said your grace is sufficient. And when you say your grace is sufficient, Lord, that's just what it is. You can take us through anything. But we're planning, Lord, to give our heart to you. To give ourselves to you first. And whatever you want to do with us, Lord, let it be thy will. But we're asking you to keep us anoint our heads with oil to our cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Yeah. As we look to you, Father. Yes, as we look to you for it all. Yeah. With these blessings and all other blessings we ask in your son, Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And God keep you. And God makes his face to shine on you. All right, thank you, Reverend Scott. Amen. For a great word from the Lord about how we can triumph through Jesus Christ's victory. We can triumph in our own lives. Amen. Well, we can't worship y'all without giving. It's giving time, time for our tithes and our offerings. Amen. For those that use Giveify, bless you. Cash app. Bless you. Whether you mail in or ask somebody to pick it up, bless each and every one of you. We can't be God given. Amen. Amen. No matter how hard we try. Amen. We woke up this morning. That's worth more than we could ever pay him for. Amen. Amen. Our life and our blood going through our veins. Amen. So we like to thank the Lord at this particular time in our giving. Just giving back a small portion of the blessings that he has given us. Amen. Uh, let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you once again for these tithes, offering, and these our gifts, Lord. We ask you to continue to bless us, O oh, gracious Father, to be good stewards of the many blessings that you have bestowed on us. Bless those that had it to give. Bless those, O oh, gracious Father, that had it not. And we ask this in the precious name above all names, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we'll have closing remarks from our own Reverend Leo Scott and a benediction. God bless you. Galilee family, thank you once again for allowing me to stand before you all to give a word from on high. But we still got to let Christ triumph in our life. In other words, let Christ guide us through by following his lead. Yeah. And he gave us 66 books to do so. Yeah. It's all in those 66 books where, where he's helping us to get to the big door that's above our head yeah. to be with him forever. Yeah. Shall we stand? communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you hence now and forever. And all the church said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.